Hi, hello all. Welcome back to Hare Academy CAC SCMA, where success is built on strong foundation. I'm Uday Kumar, and in today's session, we are diving into our management accounting MCQ series for CMA Inter Group 2. So, okay, so so far in our previous attempt, we brought you the double under MCQ series for group one. And again, this time we are enhancing your preparation for group two with comprehensive coverage of for paper nine, OM and SM, paper 10 corporate accounting and auditing, paper 11, financial management and business data analytics, and paper 12, management accounting. Okay, so if you are looking for MCQs across all papers, they are available as a bundle for purchase on our website, which is Hari Academy CACSCMA.graphy.com or through our app on the Play Store. Okay, so check the description below for the link. So those are available at a nominal cost. Okay, and please note that these MCQs are in a non downloadable format, which is nothing view only format. You can just view and you cannot download the PDFs. And one more thing which I would like to share you is for those students, those who have joined our live classes, this is going to be a perfect quick revision for your management accounting. So, and moreover, those who are watching, like uh, if you haven't seen any video or like record, uh, attended the recorder class, or live classes, so you can purchase our recorder classes on our website to cover every concept in detail. And please feel free to ask any questions if you have. And so, further, uh, so without any further delay, Let's jump into the management accounting MCQs. Question number one. Okay. Which of the following is not included in batch level activities? Option A, material ordering cost. Option B, machine setup cost. Option C, inspection cost. Option D, designing the product. So here, what could be the answer? So first, you need to know about what is meant by batch level activities. So batch level activities are cost incurred to support a batch of production. Like such as material ordering, machine setup, and inspection. But whereas product design is a product level activity, right? As it relates to creating or modifying of a product, not individual batches. So here are the right option, which is designing the product. Okay. So moving to the question number two, management accounting can be viewed as management accounting can be viewed as what? Marketing oriented accounting, management oriented accounting, accounted accounting oriented management, or uh, option D, manager oriented accounting. What could be the answer? So here the management oriented accounting. The name itself represents management accounting, right? So management accounting focuses on what? On providing information that helps management in decision making, planning, and controlling, making it man, making it management oriented accounting. Okay. So here management oriented accounting is the right option. So moving to the question number three. Which of these is not a cost driver for customer service activity? So this cost driver you would have learned in the what? Activity based costing, right? So, which of these is not a cost driver for customer service activity? What are they? Num option A, number of service calls. And option B, number of produce, uh, sorry, product serviced. Option C, how spent on servicing products. So, these are the cost drivers, right? And option D, sales revenue. So, sales revenue, it's, it cannot be a cost driver. It will be like uh, included in the cost pool even, okay? But here, sales revenue, not whereas it, so it doesn't come under the Cost driver. So number of service calls, number of products uh, serviced, how spent on servicing products, these all are, this all comes under the cost driver. So option D is the right answer here. So moving to the question number four, management accounting assists the management in. Okay. So option A, planning, directing, controlling. Just now we have read, right? Management account oriented accounting. So in which we have discussed management accounting helps in making decisions, planning, and controlling. So here option D, all of the above is the right option. Moving to the question number five. Management accounting is concerned with accounting information, which is useful to the management. This definition is given by, this definition is given by whom? So for this, you, you should, you must go through the theory part, okay, in the book, okay. So Brown and Howard, they defined the management accounting as accounting information useful to the management. Other options refer to different organizations or individuals in accounting history, okay. So here, Brown and Howard is the right option. Moving to the question number six, okay. Activity based costing. So, what does it mean? Like activity based costing. Option A uses a plant wide overhead rate to assign overhead. Option B is not expensive to implement. Option C typically applies overhead cost using direct labor hours. That is absorption costing. Option D uses multiple activity rates. So here, option D is the right option. If you have learned activity based costing, we are still we are like what, what we are doing in the activity based costing. So usually we would have like incurring the overhead cost. That is your like a 
absorbed with the help of direct labor hours in absorption costing or traditional costing we say right but whereas activity based costing is using the multiple activity rates that's what that's why we are using cost drivers cost pools to what to do what so to uh, like a uh, apportion the like absorb the uh, overheads to particular activity right so using the multiple activity multiple activity rates we use that right activity based costing option d is the right option moving to the question number 7 the primary objective of management accounting is what is the primary objective let's look at the options option a maximize profits of course option b minimize losses nothing but maximizing profits maximizing the profits ultimately option c maximize profits or minimize losses so you, this is also the right option option d all of them so all of them is the right option okay so because management accounting aims to assist management in what maximizing profits minimizing losses and achieving overall organizational objectives by providing what relevant financial and non financial information okay so option d all of the above is the right option moving to the question number 8 cost question number 8 cost of maintaining your building is option a unit level cost option b batch level cost option c product level cost option d facility level cost so here when it comes to like a cost of maintaining a building is like it is a facility level cost because facility level cost are those that supports the entire organization or factory and or not tied to specific units batches or products so here building maintenance is one such cost which is facility level cost okay so moving to the question number 9 painting the product would be an example of which activity level groups option a facility level option b product level option c unit level option d batch level so painting painting the product so painting the product is nothing but unit level activity because unit level activities are performed for each unit of production such as painting or assembling a product right as they occur per individual unit okay so here unit level activities are adoption moving to the question number 10 process of allocation under activity based to costing is process of allocation under activity based to costing is like there are few options given here option a cost of activities activities cost driver cost allocated to cost objects option b cost driver cost of activities cost allocated to cost objects activities option c activities cost of activities cost driver cost allocated to cost objects yes option d activities cost driver cost driver cost allocated to cost objects options uh, cost of activities pardon so here in apc the process start with identifying first thing activities and then determining their cost and then linking those cost to cost drivers and finally allocating them to the cost objects okay so what i said so identifying activities determining their cost linking those cost to cost drivers and finally allocating them to the cost objects so first comes activities cost of activities cost driver and cost allocated to cost objects so option c is the right option here and moving to the question number 11 an item for which cost measurement is required example product job or a customer an item for which cost measurement is required he said like example product job or a customer so here what is it cost pool no cost driver no cost absorption definitely not and option d cost object because what is the reason a cost object refers to what any item right that could be product job customer anything it can be for which cost are measured analyzed and assigned right so cost object is the right option so moving to the question number 12 which of the following task is not normally associated with an activity based costing system so here he is asking that which of the following task is not normally associated with an activity based costing system option a calculation of cost application rates option b identification of cost pools option c preparation of allocation matrices option d identification of cost drivers so here the right option which is preparation of allocation matrices because abc which is nothing but activity based costing focuses on identifying the cost pools and drivers right and calculating the application rates allocation matrices are not part of the typical abc process okay so which of the following task is not normally he asked in a negative manner okay so calculation of cost application is all associated with activity based costing right so moving to the question number 13 a cost driver a cost driver is what like is a force behind the overhead cost is an allocation based is a transaction that is a significant determination of cost yes so these all are the cost driver right meaning itself represents okay so option d is the right option because all of the above a cost driver is a force that triggers overhead cost serves as an allocation base and represent a transactions or factor significantly affecting cost levels 
ओके सो आप क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन अंडर एक्टिविटी बेस्ड कॉस्टिंग मेटीरियल ऑर्डरिंग इज कंसिडर्ड एस मेटीरियल ऑर्डरिंग इज कंसिडर्ड एस वॉट सो इफ यू आर इन टू द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड इफ यू आर प्लेसिंग एन ऑर्डर फॉर द मेटीरियल ऑन विच लेवल ऑफ एक्टिविटी इज कंसिडर्ड यूनिट ऑफ फेसिलिटी लेवल ऑफ बैच लेवल एक्टिविटी ऑफ प्रोडक्ट लेवल एक्टिविटी ऑफ सो here the answer which is batch level activity right so because material ordering is performed for each batch of production not for individual units right so are the enter facility making it a batch level activity so option c batch level activity is the right option so moving to the question number 15 which of this is not a cost driver for marketing and sales function which of this is not again here you have to note this points not okay as a co a cost driver for market marketing and sales function option a number of advertisements or insertions number of research projects number of sales personnel sales revenue is that look like a cost driver no cost drivers for marketing and sales functions include the number of advertisements research projects and sales personnel so sales revenue is an income not a cost driver right so moving to the question number 16 is giving me scan Question number sixteen: An activity-based costing, an inspection of the product is a level activity. An inspection of the what product? So product means it is nothing but finished product, finished goods. So inspection is typically conducted for batches, right? Of batches of products we say, rather than an individual units, making it a batch level activity. Okay. So moving to the question number seventeen. To obtain the break-even point in rupee sales value, total fixed cost or divided by you would have learned in your marginal costing, right? So total fixed cost or divided by in order to get what break-even point in rupee sales value, which is nothing but total fixed cost divided by PV. Just give me a second. PV ratio. So here are the option which is what is the right option here? Option D is the right option here, which is nothing but PV. Ah, uh, which is nothing but profit volume ratio. So, in order to find out the in units, what you will be doing? Total fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. Clear? So, option D is the right option here. So, moving to the question number eighteen. The break-even point is the point at which there is no profit, no loss. Option B. Contribution margin is equal to total fixed cost. So, if the contribution margin is like let's say hundred. And the, even the fixed cost is hundred. Contribution minus fixed cost is nothing but zero. Then option B is also right option. No profit, no loss. No loss is also the right option. Total revenue is total equal to total cost. Let's say your revenue is like ten thousand. Your cost is ten thousand. So what is the right option here? So the right option which is all of the above. So moving to the question number nineteen. Contribution margin is known as what? Marginal income, gross profit, net income. Or net profit. So contribution margin is already you would have learned, which is nothing but we say marginal income because contribution margin represents the income remaining after deducting all variable cost from sales revenue, right? Okay. So this so it's referred as a marginal income. Moving to the question number twenty. Factors which can change the break-even point. What factors do you think? So in the from the below options, change in total fixed cost. Change in variable cost per unit, change in the selling price per unit, the all of the above. Yes, all these can like influence what break-even point. So all of the above is the right option. So moving to the question number twenty-one. So these all are we have proved theoretically in our live sessions. Which is nothing but if you want to, if you like to watch the videos, it is available in recorded. So you can just visit the website below and then you can. By the classes, so for all this, so you might think like, ah, uh, so what's the like? Can you explain here? We cannot explain here because it's a MCQ sessions. So if you want to know the clarity, which means the theoretical part in detail, you can buy the classes and watch the videos. Okay, so even the total fixed cost or variable cost per unit, selling price per unit, all these can influence what break one point. So option D, all of the above is the right option here. So moving to the question number twenty one, a decrease in sales price, option A, does not affect the break one point, lowers the fixed cost. Increases the break-even point, lowers the break-even point. A yeah, decrease in sales price. What does it happen if you are decreasing the sales price? Let's say from hundred to fifty. What happens to your break-even point? You need to cover your cost. So in order to cover your cost, your break-even point should get increased. So ultimately, lowering the sales price reduces the contribution margin per unit, which increases the number of units required to cover the fixed cost. So thereby increasing the break-even point. So option. C is the right option here. 
Moving to the question number 22. Margin of safety is referred to as margin of safety is referred to as excess of budget order actual sales over the variable expenses and fixed expense at break even. And option B, excess of budgeted or actual sales revenue over the fixed expenses, excess of actual sales over budgeted sales, excess of sales revenue over the variable expenses. What is it here? Excess of budget or actual sales over the variable expenses and fixed expense at break even. So that's why we say margin of safety is equal to total sales minus break even sales. You will get the margin of sales. So in margin of sales, yeah, the, like it's purely profit because up to break even point you would have covered your all your expenses that could be variable as well as fixed expenses so till the break even point you have covered all your cost right so from beyond the break even the sales which you have made is purely a profitable sale right so excess of budgeted or actual sales over the variable expenses and fixed expenses at break even so okay margin of safety measures the amount by which sales can drop before reaching the break even point so margin of safety is calculated as what? Actual sales minus break-even sales. Okay. So option A is the right option here. So moving to the question number 23. Period costs are, period costs are what type of cost they are? They are overhead cost. You should have like learned all these topics in your regular classes. Okay. So period cost, they include non-production costs such as administrative, selling and distribution expenses. So which are classified as overheads and are incurred over a specific period. So that's, they are overheads. So administration and selling when it comes, they are considered as a overhead, right? Not they, it does not come under the like prime cost, fixed cost or variable cost. So it's periodically, right? Over a specific period. Moving to question number 24, the costing method where fixed factory overheads are added to inventory is called. Fixed factory overheads are added to inventory. So this is what you would have learned in your group one costing, absorption costing, right? Okay, so even here it is, right, available. So under absorption costing, all cost incurred, like including fixed factory overheads are allocated to the cost of production and included in inventory valuation, right? So moving to the question number 25, contribution margin is equal to what profit plus variable cost okay simple these are simple answers you need not get um, confused with all this moving to the question number 26 pv ratio will increase if there is what are the options a decrease in fixed cost fixed cost is irrelevant because pv ratio considers only sales and what contribution right option b an increase in fixed cost never a decrease in selling price per unit and option D, a decrease in variable cost per unit. So if the selling price is decreasing, ultimately PV ratio also like goes, goes in the same way. But whereas option D, a decrease in variable cost per unit, if your variable cost is decreasing and if your sales is like, let's say, uh, let's consider 1000 rupees is your sales and your variable cost, which is 500. Now the PV ratio will be what? 500 contribution divided by sales 500 divided by 1000 which will be like 50 percentage now just decrease the variable cost from 500 to 250 the sales remains constant now the contribution 750 now contribution divided by sales 75 percentage ultimately a decrease in variable cost per unit increases the pv ratio so options d is the right option here moving to the question number 27 marginal marginal cost is taken as equal to Option A, prime cost plus all variable overheads. Prime cost minus all variable overheads. Option C, variable overheads. Option D, none of them. Which is the right option here? Prime cost plus all variable overheads. Marginal cost, right? Additional cost. So marginal cost is nothing but additional cost, which is nothing but variable cost. We can say, we can call it as it changes. So marginal cost is nothing but when you add an additional unit, so the cost which you are incurred for that additional particular unit. So okay, prime cost plus all variable overhead. So marginal cost is the total of all variable cost, including prime cost, which is nothing but direct material, direct labor and direct expenses and variable overheads. Number 28. So, okay. While computing profit in marginal costing, option A, the fixed cost gets added to the contribution. The total marginal cost gets deducted from total sales revenue. Option C, the total marginal cost gets added to total sales revenue. Option D, none of them. So, which is the right option here? So, total marginal cost gets deducted from total sales revenue in order to gain what? The profit in marginal costing. Okay. So, in marginal costing, 
profit is calculated by subtracting the total marginal cost, which is nothing but variable cost. So here we used to say that in marginal costing, we used to call the marginal cost is nothing but variable cost. Okay. So profit is calculated by subtracting the total marginal cost and fixed cost from total sales revenue. So option B is the right option here. Okay. So moving to the question number 29. Prop, oh, sorry. Popular method of transfer pricing is the popular method of transfer pricing is the option A. Opportunity cost pricing. Option B, negotiated pricing. Option C, market-based pricing. Option D, cost-based pricing. So option C is the right option here because market-based pricing. Market-based pricing uses what? External market prices as a benchmark for setting transfer prices, right? So it is widely used as it reflects the competitive market conditions, okay? So moving to the question number 30. The difference in total cost Okay, so the difference in total cost that results from two alternative courses of action is called option A, relevant cost, opportunity cost, differential cost, marginal cost. Option C is the right option, differential cost, because this differential cost refers to the cost difference between two alternatives, right? The name itself represents difference. So differential cost refers to the difference between two alternatives. It is relevant in what? And it is relevant in decision making where two or more options are being evaluated okay so when you are having two or more options that which is to be evaluated so for the decision making purpose the, the differential cost is relevant and important aspect okay so moving to the question number 31 the profit at which total revenue is equal to the total cost is known as what break even point okay without any doubt we can you can select the option right so here it is differential cost Okay, moving to the question number 32. Which of the following cost would not be accounted for in a company's record keeping system? So you cannot unexpired cost, expired cost, product cost, opportunity cost. Because opportunity cost is the right option here. Because the opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative foregone. Okay, so which you have lost. Okay, which you are forgiven, like forgive, you are forgiving something, right? The next best alternative for gone and it's not recorded in the accounting system since it is not a direct monetary transaction, right? It's not a direct monetary transaction. So that's why you will not be recording the opportunity cost. So option D is the adoption here. Moving to the question number 33. Division P transfers its output to division Q at variable cost. Once a year, P changes a fixed fee to Q, representing an allowance for P's fixed cost. This type of transfer pricing system is commonly known as what? Two-part tariff transfer pricing. Because in two-part tariff transfer pricing, okay, tariff pricing, the transfer price includes a variable component, that is variable cost, and a fixed component, fixed, co fixed fee, right? So here, Two-part tariff transfer pricing is the right option here. Okay, moving to the question number 34. Which one of the following is not considered as a method of transfer method of transfer pricing? Option A, negotiated transfer pricing, market price-based transfer pricing. Option C, fixed cost-based transfer pricing. Option D, opportunity cost-based transfer pricing. So here the option C is the right option, fixed cost-based transfer pricing because transfer pricing methods includes negotiated market-based and opportunity cost. Okay. Opportunity cost based pricing. But fixed cost based pricing is not a recognized method uh, since transfer price are usually set based on variable cost, market conditions, or negotiated items. Okay. So here, fixed cost based transfer pricing is not considered as a method of transfer pricing. You should you have already learned it, right? So moving to the question number 35. The dash method of transfer pricing was introduced in order to overcome the problems caused by using marginal cost. So dash dash was the method two part transfer pricing. Okay, moving to the question number 36. Standard costing is a two, which replaces the, the bottleneck of the dash dash costing, historical cost. You need not like think of it even. So because standard costing replaces historical costing, which relies on past data, right? So standard costing sets predetermined cost for better planning and control. Okay, so moving to the question number 37, from cost control point of view, the standard most commonly used is, the standard most commonly used is expected standard, theoretical standard, normal standard, basic standard, which is the right option here, expected standard, because, and expected standards are realistic and achievable under normal working conditions, right, making them effective for cost control and 
performance evaluation okay so expected standard is the right option here moving to the question number 38 which of the following equations can be used to calculate material quantity variance so what does it mean by the first thing material quantity variance what what you have already predetermined like what you have like what is your standard quantity consumption as per your records and what you have consumed in reality so what is the material used in reality to manufacture the product that is what material quantity variance what is the difference in actually projected and actual utilized okay projected and utilized okay so what is the right option here aq into sp minus sq into s sorry sq into sp so here aq is nothing but actual quantity into standard price minus standard quantity into standard price what was the standard quantity and standard price which we, we we have determined and what is the actual quantity we have utilized is the material quantity variance so this compares the standard cost of actual and standard usage so option c is the right option here so moving to the question number 39 which of the following activities is true under the standard costing system option a the overhead volume variance is always beneficial the idle term variance is never favorable to calculate the overall cost a company can either use budgetary control or standard costing but not both of those techniques okay the overhead efficiency variance plus overhead expense variance is equal to the overhead budget variance for variable overheads so what is the right option here which of the following activities true under the standard costing system the overhead efficiency variance plus overhead expense variance is equal to the overhead budget variance for variable overheads so in standard costing, the sum of overhead variances, which is nothing but efficiency and expense, equals a budget variance for variable overheads. Option D is the adoption here. So moving to the question number 40. Setting of standard involves effective utilization of setting of standard involves what? Option A, min, material machines, all of these, right? So all of the above. So moving to the question number 41. Standards differs from budgets in that budgets but not standards may be used in valuing inventories. Option B, budgets, but not standards may be journalized and posted. Option C, budgets are a total amount and standards are a unit amount. Option D, so only budgets contribute to management, planning and control. So, standard differs from budget in what? So, budgets are a total amount. Standards are a unit amount. Because budget represents the total planned cost for a specific period. While standards specify the cost per unit of unit or activity, Used for comparisons. Okay, moving to the question number 42. The advantages of standard cost include all the following except management by exception may be used. Management planning is facilitated. This may simplify the costing of inventories. Option D, management must use a static budget. So the advantage of standard cost include the following. Management by exception may be used. Management planning is facilitated. They may simplify the costing of inventories. But management you must use a static budget is not a... Uh, advantage right so moving to the question number 43 which of the following is correct but about the total overhead variance which of the following is correct about the total overhead variance what are the options given here for us so option a budgeted overhead and budgeted overhead applied are budgeted overhead and budgeted overhead are up overhead applied are the same and option b total actual overhead is composed of variable overhead fixed overhead and period cost option c standard hours actually worked or used in computing the variance okay option d standard hours allowed for the work done is the measure used in computing the variance so here option d is the absolute right answer right correct about the total overhead variance because standard hours allowed for the work done is the measure used in computing the variance right okay so the total overhead variance is calculated using standard hours allowed for actual output and comparing it with the actual overhead cost incurred so standard hours allowed for the work done is the measure used in computing the variance is the right option. Moving to the question number 44. Normal standards allow for rest periods, machine breakdowns, breakdowns and setup time can be represent levels of performance under perfect operating conditions. And option C are rarely used because managers believe they lower workforce moral. Option D are more likely than ideal standards to result in unethical practices. So which is the right option here? Option A allow for rest periods, machine break breakdowns, and setup time. So normal standards uh, reflect achievable performance. Considering the practical limitations like rest periods and machine downtime, unlike ideal standards which assume perfect conditions. Okay, so option A is the adoption here. Moving to the question number 45, the setting of standard is a managerial accounting decision, a management decision, a worker decision, 
preferably set at the ideal level of performance, which is an adoption here, a management decision. Option B. The reason while well, like uh, a managerial accounting provides data, the ultimate decision about standard setting lies with the management to align with what organizational goals. So okay, it's a management decision. Moving to the question number 46. A budget should be how? A budget should be always flexible, not rigid, right? So flexible budgets allow adjustments based on actual activity level, levels, right? So making them more practical for planning and controlling the rigid budgets, okay? So rigid in the sense static, it's a particular budget with a particular amount. So moving to the question number 47. Production budget is based upon sales budget, factory capacity, availability of raw material and labor, all of the above. So all of the above is the right option here because the production budget depends on sale forecast, sales budget, anything but sales budget, the factory's capacity and the availability of raw materials and labor to ensure the feasibility, right? Okay, so moving to the question number 48. Following may be regarded as a summary budget. Which budget? Master budget, which we have discussed in our theory session, right? So moving to the question number 49. What is the name given to a budget that has been prepared by re-evaluating activities and comparing the incremental cost of those activities with their incremental benefits? Which budget is that? So it is what type? In theory, we have discussed, right? Zero based budget. In zero based budgeting, all activities are reviewed and justified from scratch, focusing on their incremental cost and benefits. Unlike a traditional budgets, they rely upon past data. Okay. So moving to the question number 50. Standard cost option A are imposed by governmental agencies or predetermined unit cost, which company uses as a measure of performance, can be used by manufacturing companies, but not by service or not for profit companies. Option D, all of the above. What is the right option here? Standard cost for predetermined unit. That that's it. That itself enough to like uh, mark the option here or predetermined unit cost, which companies use as a measure of what performance. Okay. So moving to so moving to the question number fifty one. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So moving to the question number fifty one. The standard cost card contains quantities and cost for. Direct material, direct labor only. Option C, direct material and direct labor only. Option D, direct material, direct labor and overhead. So what are the standard cost card contains? You would have learned in your theory part. So it contains direct material, direct labor and overhead. Because a standard, call, a standard cost card provides detailed information about the standard quantity and cost of direct materials, direct labor and overhead required to produce a unit of product. So option D is the right option here. Okay, move to the question number 52. Major disadvantages of decentralization are option A can result in a lack of goal congruence or sub optimization by subunit managers. Option B requires more effective communication abilities because decision making is removed from the home office. Option C helps top management recognizes and develop managerial talent. Option D both one and two. So here he is asking the disadvantages of decentralization. So just take a look at option A and uh, B, can result in a lack of goal congruence. Yes, that's true. So first thing, if you want to know about what is meant by goal congruence, you should have watched our classes. So in detail, we have explained, right? So when it comes to like two divisions, so there will be a different goals, right? So we can call it as decentralization ultimately may lead to the suboptimal decisions due to a lack of alignment. Okay, what we call it is usually suboptimal decisions. That too, because due to the lack of alignment with organization goals. So that is what goal congruence issues we, we used to say, right? And it requires effective communication as decisions are made away from the central office. Yes, because the decisions are made away from the central office, right? So here, can result in a lack of goal congruence or sub-optimization sub by subunit managers? Option B, requires more effective communication abilities because decision making is removed from the home office. So option D, both one and two is the right option here. So moving to the question 53, R&D budget and capital expenditure budgets are examples of what? R&D and capital expenditure is nothing but short term budget or current budget or long term is absolutely when it comes to like R&D and capital, it's the name itself represents the long term, long term budget. Okay. So because, so these budgets involve long term planning and resource allocation for projects or expenditures. 
so that extend beyond the current financial year so if it is beyond the current financial year then it is said to be long term budget okay moving to the question number 54 a company usually determines the appropriate degree of decentralization based on a com combination of the managerial personal characteristics option b nature of decision required for organizational growth option c types of organizational activities in each which the company is engaged option d all of this so this is the right option here all of this because the degree of decentralization depends on various factors including managers characteristics decision making requirements for growth and the type of activities the organization engages in okay option d is the right option here okay moving to the question number 55 do point roe is equal to which is which we have discussed and moreover the do point analysis is already available in fm subject 2 so option is the margin on sales into asset turnover into equity multiplier okay so the do point formula uh, like uh, into three components we can break them into three components which is nothing but return on equity uh, okay so the profitability is nothing but margin on sales and efficiency is asset turnover and leverage is equity multiplier so usually profitability into efficiency into leverage which is nothing but margin on sales Uh, into asset turnover into equity multiplier so this is providing a detailed analysis of the performance okay so question number 56 dash expresses a divisional profit as a percentage of the assets employed in the division so here dash expenses divisional profit as a percentage of the assets employed in the divisions which is nothing but option a return on investment earnings per share or was it like a return on capital employed a bit down okay so so just ebitda is nothing but earnings before interest and tax interest and tax or depreciation or amortization okay so here divisional profit as a percentage of the assets employed in the division which is nothing but assets is nothing but investment return on investment so return on investment is a measure that evaluates the profitability of a division by comparing divisional profit to the assets employed okay so moving to the question number 57 return on investment is what return on investment is Profit before tax divided by operations management capital employed into hundred. Profit before interest and tax and divided by cap total capital employed into hundred. Or return on equity divided by operations management capital employed into hundred. Option D. Profit before interest and tax divided by operations management capital employed into hundred. So option D here yeah, profit before interest and tax because ROE is calculated by dividing the profit before interest and tax, which is nothing but we used to say. PBIT or EBIT, right? By the operational capital employed, expressed as a percentage to assess how efficiently the division is utilizing its assets. Okay. So moving to the question number eight, return on equity. Return on is equity is equal to net profit margin into asset turnover ratio into financial leverage, gross profit margin into asset turnover ratio into financial leverage. So net profit margin into inventory turnover ratio into financial leverage, net profit margin into asset turnover ratio into operating leverage. So which is the right option here? Net profit margin into asset turnover ratio into financial leverage. The reason return on equity is determined by comparing the profitability, efficiency, and leverage. What I said? Profitability, efficiency. Profitability is nothing but net profit margin. Efficiency, asset turnover, leverage, financial leverage. So it's all ultimately reflecting the efficiency of equity utilization. Okay, so moving to the question number fifty nine, financial leverage means financial leverage means what? Which we have already learned. It is the use of debt to acquire the additional assets or fund projects. Okay. Question number sixty, asset usage performance means asset usage performance. What does it mean? Option A, a very basic profitability ratio. Option B, total asset turnover. This is nothing but turnover divided by total assets. Option C. The use of debt to acquire additional assets or fund projects. Option A, none of this. So, which is nothing but ultimately the total uh, total asset turnover, right? So, total asset turnover, asset usage performance represented by total asset turnover. It measures how efficiently a company uses its as total assets to generate revenue. Okay. So, question question number sixty one. The theory of learning curves will only hold if which of the following conditions apply. So, what are the conditions? Just take a look. Okay, the option A, the task must be repetitive, production must be at an early stage so that there is a room for improvement. There is inconsistency in the workforce. So, op and option D, both one and two. So, which is the right option here for question number sixty-one? So, learning curves apply when tasks are repetitive, 
which is nothing but so workers improve with practice and production is in the early stage okay so providing opportunities for performance improvement so option d both one and two are the conditions okay so moving to the question number 62 the main advantages of ri is r it avoids suboptimal decisions as investment are not rejected merely because they lowered the divisional managers return on investment so option b it maximizes growth of the company and increases shareholders wealth by accepting opportunities which earn a rate of return in excess of the cost of capital is absolutely right option c the cost of capital charge and divisional investments ensures that divisional managers are aware of the opportunity cost of funds is it's also absolutely right so option d all of these is the right option here okay so here the residual income or is nothing but what residual income aligns with divisional goals with company wide objectives so it increases value creation and ensures managers consider the cost of capital when making decisions. So option D, all of this is the right option here. So uh, question number 63, RI, residual income is equal to divisional profit minus percentage of change in sales into divisional investment, percentage of uh, percent capital charge into total investment, percent capital charge into divisional investment, percent capital charge into divisional investment. So, which is the right option here divisional profit minus percentage percent capital charge into divisional investment because residual income calculates the income and above the minimum required return on investment promoting the decisions that exceed the cost of capital thresholds so moving to the question number 64 the area of focus on responsibility center is what Option A, quantum of sales, quantum of production, or option C, optimum utilization of resources, option D, all of the above. So, responsibility center focus on all of the above, all of this area. Okay. So, responsibility center focus on multiple aspects like sales, production, and resource utilization depending on the type of center, which we have already discussed, right? So, moving to the question number 65. In responsibility accounting, okay, in responsibility accounting, responsibilities of various groups or individuals are identified in terms of, in terms of what? Again here, what is the option here? Option A, work, revenue, cost, all of the, all of this, yes, all of this. So because responsibility accounting allocates accountability for work, revenue and cost, ensuring that individuals or groups manage their assigned areas effectively. Okay, so moving to the question number 66. Okay, so the minimum expected opportunity loss, EOL, expected opportunity loss is option A, equal to EVPA, option B, minimum regret, Option C equal to EMV, option D both A and B. So both A and B is the red option here because the minimum EOL is equal to the expected value of perfect information. Yes, EVPA. So expected opportunity loss is equal to the expected value of perfect information and corresponds to the minimum regret value. Okay. So here option D is the right option here. Moving to the question number 67. Decision theory is concerned with decision theory is concerned with methods of arriving at an optimal decision. Yes. Selecting optimal decision in a sequential manner. Yes. Analysis of information that is available. Yes. Option D. All of this is the right option here. Okay. So decision theory involves what methods for arriving at optimal decision, sequential decision making, and analysis of available information to ensure informed choices. Okay. So moving to the question number 68. Which of the following criterion is not used for decision making under uncertainty? So here the question is under uncertainty. So option A, what? Maximum. Sorry, min min. Sorry, maximum. Uh, option B, maximax. Option C, min max. Option D, minimize uh, expected loss. So which of the following criterion is not used for decision making under uncertainty? Under uncertainty, we have seen maximum. Min max, minimax, and maximax. But what about this minimize expected loss? Nowhere we have seen this, right? We have we haven't discussed it, right? So decision making under uncertainty typically uses criteria like maximum, maximax, or min max regret. Okay. So minimizing expected loss is applicable under risk where probabilities are known. Okay. So moving to the question number 16, which of the following characteristics is not associated with traditional responsibility accounting? Option A, assumes optimization of the parts will optimize the whole. Option B, assumes independence of the parts. Option C, plays emphasis on the performance of individuals. Option D, attempts to control process. What is the right option here? Attempts to control the process because traditional responsibility accounting focuses on financial outcomes and individual performance rather than controlling the operational process so attempts to control process is not associated with traditional responsibility okay so moving to the question number 70 which of the following criterion is not applicable to decision making under risk maximize expected return no maximize return 
no minimize expected return no so sorry maximize expected return it comes other applicable otherwise maximize return so it is not applicable okay so decision making under risk involves criteria like maximum expected return or minimizing expected return which consider probabilities of outcomes not solely maximizing the return so maximize return is the third option here because it is not applicable so moving to the question number 71 okay the sequence of possible management decision and their expected outcome under each set of circumstances can be represented by like represented and analyzed by using what so analyze using what decision tree yes so option a minimax regret credit and option b decision tree option c a payoff matrix option d simulation a decision tree is the graphically represent possible decisions outcomes probabilities and payoffs making it ideal for analyzing sequential decisions So moving to the question number 72, a situation in which a decision maker knows all of the possible outcomes of a decision and also knows the probability associated with each outcome is referred to, is referred to as what absolutely risk in risk only comes the probabilities and all right. So in a situation of risk outcomes are uncertain but probabilities are known unlike, unlike certainty uh, where outcomes are deterministic or uncertainty where probabilities are unknown. So here the answer is risk. So moving to the question number 73, which one of the following does not measure risk coefficient of variance. Okay. Uh, standard deviation. It's also both of the, both of the methods like uh, measures the risk LPP linear programming problem is an optimization technique, right? Not a risk measure, but whereas coefficient of variance and standard deviations are measures of risk. So moving to the question number next question. Just give me a second before that. So just give me a second. Number 74, we are comparing two investment projects. Both have expected returns of 20%, but the standard deviation of project A's return is 15%, while the standard deviation of project B's return is 9%. Which one is relatively riskier? So which one is relatively riskier? 20, so here again, two investment projects, both have expected returns of 20%. Okay, standard deviation of project A and B both are having the expected returns 20 percentage. Standard deviation of project A is 15 percentage. Standard deviation of project B is 9 percentage. Which one is relatively riskier? So here, one thing I want like to clarify. So the term deviation itself represents from the earnings you are getting deviated which is nothing but ultimately the earnings are getting deviated. So where there is a deviation is higher. So there is the relatively higher risk. Okay. So you should not like even in our while like regular classes, we would have told you like which is having a higher percentage means that is not the right answer. So if the deviation, deviation means you are getting deviated like in the normal way. So when it comes to like earnings part, so when there is a huge deviation with the earnings, that means you are not going to earn a lot. So when the project, both the projects are having the expected uh, returns of 20 percentage. So, but whereas project A's return is 15 percentage deviation. So there is a higher risk in the project A. Okay. So moving to the question number 75, which of the following methods of selecting a strategy is consistent with the risk averting behavior? So option A, if two strategies have the same expected profit, select the one with the smaller standard deviation. Yes, absolutely. That's what we have said, right? And option B, if two strategies have the same standard deviation, okay, select the one with smaller expected profit. Smaller expected profit means which is ultimately high, having the higher deviation, okay. So it is not consistent with the risk averting behavior. Option C, select the strategy with the larger coefficient. Coefficient of variance or standard deviation. How do that? So, okay. So the right option here is if two strategies have the same expected profit, select the one with the smaller standard deviation. Option A is the right option here. Move to the question number 76. The expected value of perfect information EVPI is maximum expected opportunity lost because EVPI represents the maximum amount a decision maker would be willing to pay for perfect information and is equal to the minimum expected opportunity loss. Okay. So, 
moving to the question number 77 management accounting management accounting accumulate summarize and arrange the available data it is primarily concerned with the requirements of management makes corporate planning and strategy effective the all of the above all of the above is a red option here because management accounting involves data accumulation summarization analysis corporate planning and meeting management's needs so moving to the question number 17 the main objective of the management accounting is what we have told you to ascertain analyze and interpret the results of the business operations because management accounting focuses on providing insights into the business performance to aid the management decision making okay moving to the question number 17 dash is the study of management aspects of financial accounting management accounting because management accounting bridges the financial accounting data with managerial decision making okay so our management accounting is the right option here moving to the question number 80 okay dash criteria are a set of standards for a company's behavior used by socially conscious investors to screen potential investments so what is that option a j i t b a m t c e s g d a b c so which is that so e s g because environmental social and governance criteria are standards used to evaluate a company's ethical and sustainable practices so moving to the question number 81 the purpose of management accounting is to help make decisions. Decisions by whom? Managers. That's why it's a management accounting. Clear? So management accounting provides insights to the managers to assist in planning, controlling, and decision making within an organization. Moving to the question number 82. Period of lost relevance is the dash of the evaluation of management accounting. So it's a third stage. We have discussed in the theory. So this stage highlights a phase when where traditional management accounting lost relevance due to changing business environments and the emergence of advanced techniques. Okay, so third stage. So moving to the question number 83. Management accounting is concerned with the data collection from, data collection from which resource, internal and external as well, both are. Okay, so management accounting integrates both internal operational data and external market or industry information to support decision making. Moving to the question number 84. Management accounting information helps managers formulate strategy by answering which of the following questions? Option A, who are the most important customers and how the company, uh, how can the company deliver value to the customers? Option B, what is most critical capability of the company, which may be technology, production or marketing? Option C, how can we leverage it for new strategic initiatives? Option D, all of the above is the right option here. Because, so management accounting assists in under, understanding the customer value, leveraging critical capabilities and exploring the strategic in initiatives, right? So all of this is the right option here. So moving to the question number 85, management accounting with specific focus on environmental issues is becoming increasingly important in organization as environmental costs are large in many organizations. So there are three specific reasons for this, which are environmental costs are often high in, in the high in the many manufacturing organization. Option B, regulatory requirements often impose huge fines for non-compliance. Option C, both one and two. Option D, companies are increasingly realizing that being socially and uh, environmentally responsible declines their image and this has positive impact on their bottom line. So which is the right option here? So here, see both one and two because environmental cost can be significant in manufacturing and non-compliance with regulations can lead to large fines. So these factors drive the need for environmentally focused management accounting. So both one and two is the right option here. Move to the question number 86. Which of the following is a correct definition of activity-based management? So we have to go through all these options. Option A, an approach to the costing and monitoring of activities which involves tracing resources consumption and costing final output are assigned to activities and activities to cost objects and based on our consumption estimates. The latter it relies uh, cost drivers to attach each activity cost to outputs. Okay, so option B. So before that, I would like to like uh, explain you activity-based uh, sorry, activity-based management uh, uses the information provided by activity-based costing to identify the and eliminate non-value added activities and improve our overall object profitability. So option D here is the reduction here. A system of management which uses activity-based cost information for a variety of purposes including cost reduction. Okay. So moving to the question number 87. According to the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, cost attribution to cost units on the basis of benefits received from indirect activities, example, ordering, setting, uh, setting up, uh, and assuring quality is known as what? What costing? Activity-based costing. Okay. 
So moving to the question number 88, which of the following characteristics would be an indicator that a company would benefit from switching to activity-based costing? So that is nothing but overhead cost. So only one homogeneous product is produced on a continuous basis is not an indicator. Okay, overhead costs are high and increasing and no one seems to know why. So that is the right option here. So moving to the question number 89, in an ABC system, which of the following is likely to be classified as a bachelor activity machine setup, production, product design, uh, inspection of every item produced, production manager's work. So which is machine setup because it is into the production. So production only have only has the bachelor activity, right? Moving to the question number 90, which of the following would not be detected from sales in a management report prepared using ABC, direct material and direct labor, variable selling and administration cost, shipping cost. So which is the right option here? Variable selling and administration cost because so ABC primarily focuses on allocating cost to product or services based on the activities. Okay. So selling and administration cost are often treated separately as period cost and not allocated directly to the products. Okay. So moving to the question number 91, which of the following is different in ABC when compared to traditional costing? So just take a look at the option uh, options, traditional costing and ABC costing usually yield very similar product cost. Option B in an ABC costing system. Okay. Cost are only assigned to products that actually required work that gave that gave rise to a particular cost. Option C in ABC bachelor cost are applied to products using unit level basis. On um, option D under traditional costing batch level cost are shifted from high volume products to low volume products. So which is the right option here in an ABC costing system? Cost are only assigned to products that actually required work that gave rise to a particular cost. So option B is the right option here. Moving to the question number six ninety three. Sorry, 92, in an activity-based costing, what? Non-manufacturing cost may not be assigned to products. Option B, some manufacturing cost may be excluded from product cost. Option C, allocation basis are the same as those used in traditional costing methods. So option D, similar to traditional costing, ABC only uses one overhead cost pool, which is the right option here. So some manufacturing cost may be excluded from production product cost because unlike traditional costing, ABC focuses on identifying and assess assigning the cost based on activities directly related to production. So non-value added cost or cost unrelated to activities may be excluded. So okay, moving to the question number 93, assigning overhead using ABC often shifts overhead cost from high volume products to low volume products as yes, absolutely that's the right option here. So just take a look, look at remaining three options. Shifts overhead cost from low volume products, so definitely not, provides the same results that it is no, requires one predetermined overhead cost. No. So no overhead is said like that. So next moving to the question 94, in an ABC system, the allocation basis that are used for applying cost to services or produce procedures are called, what does it mean? What cost driver? Because cost drivers are the factors that cause changes in the cost of an activity, such as machine hours or the number of setups. Okay, so moving to the question number 95, the basis of apportionment, apportionment of overheads, which takes into account the profitability of various departments is called, what what does it mean ability to pay basis because the ability to pay basis allocates over its based on the profitability of financial strength of departments so ensuring departments with higher profits bear a larger share of the overheads okay moving to the question number 96 dash should be subtracted from net product revenues instead of an arbitrary and illogical apportionment so which is that what Facility level cost, product level cost, organization level cost, high level cost, which is the right option here, product level cost, because product level cost directly attribute to your product should be detected from revenues to reflect its actual profitability rather than using arbitrary allocation methods. So moving to the question number 97, which of the following is the main cost driver of customer order processing activity, flow of the product from the assembly line, order value, number of problem suppliers, uh, number of machine charges, so which is the right option here older value or oh sorry order value so here the order value is a often a key determinant of cost incurred okay in customer order processing as large or more complex orders typically requires more resources moving to the question number 98 all of the following are examples of batch level activities except purchase order processing setting up equipment uh, the clerical activity associated with the purchase, processing purchase order to produce an order for a standard product. Option D, worker recreational facilities. So worker recreational facilities are purely irrelevant to the batch level activities, right? So here the batch level activities are uh, related to tasks performed per batch of production, such as purchase order or uh, 
processing and equipment setup okay so worker recreational facilities are unrelated to production activities moving to the question number 19 which of this is not a cost driver for the activity design of products services and process number of products in design number of parts per product number of employee training programs option d number of engineering hours so which is the right option here question number 99 number of employee training programs because employee training programs are unrelated to the design of products services and processes whereas the other options directly impact the design activities okay so which is the right option here option c number of employee training programs so okay moving to the question number 100 plant depreciation is an example of which activity level group unit level activity facility level activity batch level activity product level activity so it is nothing but facility level activity because Facility level, level activities include cost uh, incurred for maintaining the general operations okay, of a facility. So that could be like such as plant depreciation, which cannot be directly to traced to specific products or batches. So which is the right option here? Facility level activity. Clear? So we still we have only 100 more questions. We'll finish it up. Okay. So moving to the question number 101. Yeah, homogeneous cost pool is one that option A does not change over time. Option B needs many activity drivers to be allocated to a cost object. Option C can be explained with a single activity driver. Option D has only one type of material assigned to it. So which is the right option here? Yeah, homogeneous cost pool is one that can be explained with a single activity driver. So because, so a homogeneous cost pool consists of cost that can be allocated using a single activity driver because the costs are related to a single activity. So option C is the adoption here. Okay. So moving to the question number 102. Samsung and appliance manufacturer is developing a new line of ovens that uses controlled laser technology. Research and testing cost associated with the new ovens is set to arise from a unit level activity, competitive level activity, facility level activity, product sustaining activity. So the research which is made for a Samsung, a Samsung appliance is to make the product sustain in the market. Okay, so it is product sustaining activity because product sustaining activity are related to the support and, and maintenance of a specific products like research and district for a new product line. So option D is the right option here. 103. So the primary difference between a fixed budget and a variable budget is that a fixed budget includes only fixed cost while a variable budget includes only variable cost. Option B is concerned with only further acquisition of fixed cost while a variable budget is concerned with expenses which vary with sales. Option C cannot be changed after the period begins while a variable budget can be changed after the period begins. Option D is a plan for a single level of sales while a variable budget consists of several plans, one for each of several levels of sales. So which is the right option here? Option D. Because a fixed budget is set for a specific level of activity while a variable budget uh, are just based on different levels of activities. Okay. So moving to the question number 104. Within a relevant range, the amount of variable cost per unit. Within relevant range, the amount of variable cost per unit, what happens? Remains constant at each production level. Because variable cost per unit remain constant within a relevant range of production levels even though total variable cost will increase with higher production levels so that's the reason okay so moving to the 105 okay so fixed cost per unit decreases when per unit decreases when production volume increases but whereas variable cost but if even though if the production increases variable cost total increases but per unit remains the same okay production volume increases to the 106 under marginal costing system the contribution margin discloses the excess of excess of what revenue over variable cost right so just check so option c is the right option here because contribution margin represents the amount okay remaining after covering all variable cost which contributes to covering fixed cost and generating profit so option c is the right option here moving to the 107 under marginal costing the cost of product for inventory valuation includes Inventory valuation, it is prime cost and variable factory overheads. Clear? So it's prime cost and variable factory overheads. So under marginal costing, so inventory is valued at prime cost, which is nothing but direct materials and direct labor, plus variable factory overheads. Okay? Just be clear with that. So moving to the 108, if the total cost of 100 units is rupees 60,000 and that of 101 units is rupees 60,400, then the increase of 400 is the total cost is what total cost is marginal cost 
right? Additional cost which we have incurred to produce that one particular unit. Okay. So moving to the question number 100, which of the following statements are true about marginal costing? In marginal costing, fixed costs are treated as product cost. Marginal costing is not an independent system of costing. The elements of cost in marginal costing are divided into fixed and variable components. So D, both B and C. So both B and C is the reduction here because marginal costing is not an independent system of costing, but a method for decision making. And the cost elements in marginal costing are classified into fixed and variable components. So, okay. But A... In marginal costing, fixed cost are treated as product cost is incorrect because fixed cost are treated as period cost, not product cost. Okay. So option B and C is the right option here. So moving to the 110, which of the following assumptions are made while calculating marginal cost? Total fixed cost is constant at all levels of output. Total variable cost varies according to the volume of output. All elements of cost can be divided into fixed and variable components. D, all of them, all of them, because all these assumptions are made. Right. So total fixed costs are assumed to remain constant regardless of the level of output. Variable costs change in direct proportion to changes in output. All costs can be divided into fixed and variable components. So clear. So option D, all of the above is the right option here. So moving to the 111. What is the opportunity cost of making a component part in a factory given no alternative use of the capacity? So when there is no use of uh, no alternative use of the capacity, then the answer which is D zero. Because opportunity cost refers to the value of the best alternative that is forgiven, like foregone when a decision is made, right? So if there is no alternative use for uh, use for the capacity, there is no opportunity cost associated with making the component, right? So option D, zero is the right option here. So moving to the 112, relevant cost are unavoidable future and measured by cash. Avoidable future and measured by cash. Avoidable future and measured by profit. Unavoidable future and measured by profit. So which is the right option here? Avoidable future and measured by cash. So relevant cost are the cost that are incurred due to a part, uh, particular decision okay so which are avoidable and measurable in cash and they are like uh, related to the future so these are the cost considered in decision making like like some cost okay so option b is the right option here so method of pricing moving to the next question method of pricing when two separate pricing methods are used to price transfer of products from one sub unit to another is called which is what nothing but functioning pricing, concurrent pricing or optimal dual pricing. So because, so dual pricing is a method where two separate prices are applied for internal transfers between subunits. So one for cost determination and another for profit measurement. Clear? So moving to the question number 114. The Eastern division sells goods internally to the Western division of the same company. The quoted external price in industry Publications from a supplier near Eastern is rupees 200 per ton plus transportation. It costs rupees 20 per ton to transport the goods to Western. Eastern's actual market cost per ton to buy the direct materials to make the transfer product is rupees 100. Actual per ton direct labor is rupees 50. Other actual cost of storage and handling are rupees 40. The company president selects a rupees 220 transfer price. This is an example of what? Easily, the transfer price is 220, which is 20 rupees more than the total cost of rupees 200, which is 100 rupees for direct material, 50 rupees for direct labor, and 40 rupees for storage or handling, right? So, this represents a cost plus transfer pricing method, right? So, where a markup is added to the cost to determine the price. So, here the option is cost plus 20% transfer pricing, okay? So, moving to the question number 115, in which of the following circumstances is there a strong argument that profit center accounting is a waste of time? When the transferred item is also sold on an external market, when the supply division is based in a different country to head office, if the transferred item is a major product of the supplying division, if there is no similar product sold on an external market and the transferred item is a major product of the supplying division. So strong argument he is asking. Option D. Because if there is no similar product sold externally and the transferred item is a major product of the supplying division, so it may be difficult to assign a meaningful profit margin. So profit center accounting is more useful when there are comparable external market prices or a wide range of products. So which would help in evaluating the performance. So option D is the right option here. So moving to the question number 116, transfer pricing methods may be classified under four pricing methods. You already know about it, right? So which is market-based pricing, cost-based pricing, negotiated pricing, and dual pricing. So these are the four pricing methods, okay? 117, standards that can be attained only under the best circumstances are, are referred to as what 
which standards attainable standards budget standards ideal standards or practical standards so here the right answer which is ideal standards so these ideal standards represents the best possible performance under perfect conditions without any inefficiencies downtime or external factors affecting the performance so ideal standards okay so is the right option here moving to the question number 118 cost variance is the difference between the standard cost and marginal cost are the standard cost and budget cost are the standard cost and the actual cost are it is absolutely standard cost and the actual cost so cost variance is the difference between the what the cost should have been and what the cost actually was what is it the standard cost means nothing but what the cost should have been and actual cost which is nothing but what the cost actually was it helps in like this is a difference if there is any difference between so that is said to be cost variance so this cost variance it helps in identifying the inefficiencies and areas that require corrective actions so moving to the question number 119 which of the following is true of standards standard represent a benchmark or a norm standards relate to input quality standards relate to input cost so option d all of the above option d all of the above because standard represents benchmarks or norms they relate to the input quantity how much input is required and input cost how much should be spent on the input so all the options are true here all of the above so moving to the 120 who is most likely to be held responsible for a material price variance who line workers are no production supervisor no purchasing managers exactly so those are the persons who are making the like purchase order who are just placing the purchase order so before placing an order he must have a proper knowledge that whether the inventory is like unavailable or he must get a proper approval letters from the like subordinates right so he will be held responsible for a material price variance okay so moving to the question number 121 if standard cost is actual is greater than is greater than actual then it is favorable huh? yes absolutely favorable because the actual cost which you have incurred is less than the standard cost which you are like uh, should have been right so it is favorable so i would like to tell you one thing even though if it is favorable and or unfavorable okay so there must there should not be any situation arising like favorable or unfavorable it must match with the proper standard costing so that's the right scenario okay you may you may think like if it is being favorable you may think i have saved some money like i have the we have made some profits like uh, we have reduced the cost there is nothing so you can like uh, even uh, say it as there there may like likely to be like a chance of uh compromising in the quality right so there can be like uh, different scenarios can be formed okay so it must match with the standard cost and actual cost must match with the standard cost so it should not be favorable or unfavorable so okay so moving to the question number 122 when more than one material is used in the manufacture of a product which of the following variances arises so when there is a more than one material means it's a mix of combinations mixed combinations right so there comes material mix variance clear material mix variance so moving to the question number 123 which of the following equations can be used to calculate a material price variance easy easy you must try to answer these questions okay so the material price variance is calculated as a difference between the actual cost of materials and the standard cost so the standard cost arises how actual quantity into like actual quantity aq into sp and minus aq into ap St actual quantity into standard price minus actual quantity into actual price so where act is okay so which is the right option here aq into sp minus aq so it's here option d is the right option here. so moving to the question number 124 which of the following activities is the standard costing system used for so standard costing system so uh, standard costing is primarily used for what purpose cost control and also for the analyzing variance between actual and standard cost so this ultimately help the businesses adjust to their pricing and production processes right so so look for the options it is a basis for implementing cost control and fixing the price of products through variance analysis yes that's absolutely right so and option b it helps to ascertain the cost to all in relationship between products manufactured by the business it helps to establish the break even point for the, so no no where it is said like that so this is all are regarding the marginal cost so option a it is a basis for implementing cost control and fixing the price of products through variance analysis this is what we have said right so option a is the right option so which of the following is not likely to be a reason of unfavorable direct labor efficiency variance so increase in unfavorable direct labor efficiency variance what could be the reason so in an increase in direct material right so an increase in direct material prices would affect the material cost not labor efficiency so unfavorable labor labor efficiency variances are typically caused by factors like 
frequent breakdowns, lack of supervision or faulty equipment, but not material price increases. Okay. So just look for the increase in because the reason behind explaining the first option is so the remaining lack of proper supervision, use of old outdated or faulty equipment, frequent breakdowns and during production process. These are the because of unfavorable. These, these are likely to be reasons, but increase in direct material prices is irrelevant to this topic, right? So moving to the question number 126. A standard cost is a carefully dash unit cost, which is prepared for each cost you need. A standard cost is a careful da carefully dash. Standard cost is a predetermined. You need not think about like. Okay, so which of the following is the purpose of standard costing? To determine the profit at different levels, to determine break even by, to control cost, to allocate cost with more accuracy. To control cost is the right option here because the primary purpose of standard costing is to control cost by comparing actual performance against the standard cost and identifying the areas for the improvement. Okay, so moving to the question number 128. A budget is an instrument of management used as an aid in the aid in what? Planning, yes, right? Programming, yes. Control of business activities, yes. all of the above is the right option here. Okay. So moving to the question number 129, following budget may be compiled on departmental basis. Which budget is that? So following budget may be compiled on a departmental basis. Departmental basis, production budget, yes. Purchase budget, yes. Materials budget, yes. All day, all of the above. Because budgets can be compiled on a departmental basis to allocate cost and resources effectively across various functions like production, purchases, and materials management. So option D, all of the above is the red option here. So moving to the question number 130, budget includes income expenditure employment of capital d all of the books so which is the right option here again a budget typically includes income expenditure and employment of capital and helps the organization plan their financial activities and allocate resources efficiently so d all of the above is the right option here so just give me a second so moving to the question 131 purchases budget is prepared using the information from so purchases budget is prepared what so materials budget materials budget so the because the purchase budget is typically prepared using information from the materials budget as it outlines the required materials inputs for the production okay so moving to the 132 the object of budgetary control is planning or forecasting or organizing or directing so planning so budget means you are planning to do something right so planning so moving to the question number 133, the process of budgeting helps in the control of, process of budgeting helps in control of, the, there isn't all of the above, you must be careful when you are, whenever you are getting the option all of the above, you must go through the options clearly, cost of production, yes, liquidity, yes, absolutely, capital expenditure, yes, process of budget helping control of capital expenditure, liquidity, cost of production, D, all of the above is the right option here. So, because... Uh, budgeting is ultimately, as I told you, budgeting helps control cost, liquidity, and capital expenditure. So, it, it uh, by ensuring that uh, resources are allocated efficiently and even the performance is monitored against the budget. Okay. So, here moving to the question 134. The budget which is a dynamic, which is dynamic is the budget, which the budget which is dynamic is the dynamic, the name itself represents a flexible. So, a flexible budget is a dynamic budget because uh, dynamic because it is uh, it adjusts to changes in the level of activity. So unlike a static budget, which remains fixed regardless of actual performance. So option A is the right option here. Moving to the question 135. Plant utilization budget and manufacturing overhead budgets are types of plant utilization budget and manufacturing overheads budgets are types of what? Types of which budget production or sales or cost of no no cost budget because both plant utilization and manufacturing overheads budgets are considered types of cost budgets as they involve planning and controlling cost to related to production and operations. Clear? So moving to the question 136, the scare factor is also known as, the scare factor is also known as key factor or limiting factor, not linking factor. Okay. So moving to the question 137, which of the following is are not benefits of decentralized, not benefit, greater awareness of local problems. Uh, it's a benefit. Allows manager performance to be comparatively evaluated. Creates personal difficulties upon introduction, especially if managers are unwilling to delegate effectively. Develops skills level of junior managers. So which is the right option here? Creates personal difficulties up to upon introduction, especially if managers are unwilling. So this is not the benefit. Not a benefit of decentralization. So okay. So decentralization offers several benefits like greater awareness of local problems and the development of junior managers. It can create difficulties when manager resists delegating authority. Okay. So, but not option C. 
ஓகே ஸோ மூவ் டு த கொஸ்டின் ஒன் தேர்ட்டி எயிட் அக்கார்டிங் டு டூ பாயிண்ட் மெத்தால் எடுத்துக்கு மெத்தடாலஜி த்ரீ மெயின் ஃபினான்ஷியல் பேரமெண்ட்ஸ் ட்ரைவ் ரிட்டர்ன் ஆன் ஈக்விட்டி ஆர் ஆல்ரெடி வி ஹவ் டிஸ்கஸ் யூ மஸ்ட் ட்ரை டு ஆப்ரேஷன்ஸ் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் அசட் யூசேஜ் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் which is nothing but what we have said asset turnover ratio and financial leverage okay so profitability efficiency and what profitability efficiency and the degree of degree to which the debt is used which is nothing but financial leverage so okay just look for the option uh, operating performance asset usage performance financial leverage yes option b is the right option here move to the 139 according to do point analysis a company can increase its return on equity if it generates a high net profit margin or yes uh, effective uses yes has a high financial yes the all of this because profitability and asset um, uh, by efficiency and financial leverage this all combined together then only you can increase its return on equity okay so move to 140 for eva there are three responsibility centers which are eva economic value added what are the three responsibility centers so cost centers profit centers and investment center as they help evaluate performance in terms of profitability cost management and use of invested capital so all of these is the right option here moving to the 141 dash can be used to calculate the incremental cost of making extra units of a particular products to set standards for labor to prepare realistic production budget and to report the labor vary labor cost variances and to quote contract price so which is the right option here so learning curve theory so because why the learning curve theory is the right option here because learning curve theory helps calculate the incremental cost of making extra units of a product as it accounts for what efficiency gained over time as production increases uh, it is also useful for setting labor standards so preparing the production budgets and coding the contract prices right so option a learning curve theory is a right option here moving to the 142 okay the four perspectives of the balanced scorecard are what are they balanced scorecard or the balanced scorecard bse is to say that it's a strategic management tool with four key perspectives right financial customer internal business process and learning and growth so these perspectives help organization align their strategies with performance metrics right so just look for what i told financial customer internal business process and learning and growth so just look for the options so wherever you are getting that's the right option here option b option a no option b no option c financial perspective customers perspective internal business perspective learning and growth perspective option c is the right option here so simple right so moving to the question number 143 according to kaplan and norton which of the balanced scorecard perspective serves as the focus of the other perspectives focus of others perspectives is nothing but what financial okay according to norton and kaplan kaplan and norton whatever it is the financial perspective serves as a overall focus of the balanced scorecard and it provides the ultimate measures of success and the other perspectives like customer internal business perspective and learning and growth so, so it supports the achievement of financial objective so here the option which is financial is the right option here so moving to the question 144 the performance of investment center is based on performance of investment investment center profit and investment of the center is based on profit and investment center okay so moving to the question 145 which of the following would be considered an operating asset in return on investment computation operating asset in return on investment computations so in return on investment as it's nothing but roi computations operating assets are those like uh, assets that are actively used in the core business operations right so accounts receivable represents money owed to the businesses for goods or services which already they have provided right making it an operating asset so here operating asset in return on investment computation is nothing but accounts receivable here okay so moving to the question 146 a company that is seeking to increase roi should attempt to decrease average operating assets of margin turnover sales which is the right option here average operating assets okay so because to a company can either increase its profit or reduce the amount of operating assets to generate the profit like by reducing the average operating assets because the average operating assets if you are decreasing you are improving the asset efficiency or disposing of non essential assets right so the ultimately the company can increase its roi moving to the 147 both cost and revenue are measured in dash dash center cost and revenue are both are measured in profit center so responsibility accounting is used for what purpose cost control okay so responsibility accounting helps in cost control by 
uh, assigning the specific cost and revenues to different departments or individual within the organization, allowing for better tracking and management of financial performance. So moving to the 149, a cost center is a segment of the organization where the manager is responsible for the cost, right? So moving to the 150, responsibility accounting is also known as what accounting, activity accounting, okay? So with this, we have completed 150 questions. Still, we have only 50 more questions to complete our double hundred MCQ series. Okay. Question 151. So in profit center, revenue represents a monetary measure of output emanating from a profit center in a given period, irrespective whether. So there are four options given here again. So option A, the revenue is realized or not. Option B, the output is sold or not. Option C, both A and B, D, none of the above. So here, both A and B is the right option because revenue in a profit center reflects monetary output, whether the revenue has been like a realized or the output has been sold or not. So this is consistent with accrual accounting principle. So both A and B is the right option here. Okay. And moreover, just, uh, just for the clarification purpose. So here, the 150 question responsibility accounting is also known as both A and B. Okay. Profitability uh, accounting as well as both A and B. Sorry for the inconvenience okay so both a and b is the right option here so moving to the question 152 the value of the coefficient of optimism is needed while using the criterion of which thing so coefficient of optimism so it is required in like realism concept okay so the coefficient of optimization which is nothing but alpha or a is used in the Horvick's criterion of realism, right? So, which is a decision-making approach that combines optimism and pessimism by assigning weights to the best and worst outcomes. So, okay. So, realism is the added option here. So, moving to the question 153. Okay. So, the difference between expected profit under conditions of risk and the expected profit with perfect information is called, is called what? The expected value of perfect information, right? So the expected value of per for perfect information, EBPA, quantifies the benefit of having perfect information before making a decision under risk conditions. So moving to the question 154, the decision maker's knowledge and experience may influence the decision making process with using the criterion of, criterion of what? Realism. Yeah. So the realism criterion incorporates like a decision maker's perspective, right? So balancing the optimistic and the pessimistic approaches. And it is also influenced by the knowledge and experience. So clear. So option C is the adoption here. So moving to the question number 155. If a decision maker is, uh, if a decision maker is risk averse, then the best strategy to select is that the one that yields the what? Highest expected utility or payoff or utility. Clear? So because, so risk averse decisions makers prioritize maximum utility rather than payoff. So they evaluate decisions based on utility, which accounts for the risk preferences. Clear? So moving to the question 156. Cost attribution to cost units on the basis of benefit received from indirect activities such as ordering, setting up, uh, and assuring the quality is known as activity-based costing. So these are the process which are done in activity-based costing. So yeah, moving to the question 157. A radio manufacturer finds that it costs to be 6.25 per unit to make a component M140 and the same is available in the market rupees 5.75. Continuous supply is also fully assured. The breakdown cost per unit as follows. Material cost 2.75, labor cost 1.75, other variable expenses 0.5. Depreciation and other fixed cost rupees 1.25. What would be your division if the supplier offered the component at rupees 4.25 per unit? You have to calculate all that cost. Okay, so 2.75, 1.75, which is nothing but ultimately 4.5, 4.5 plus 0.5, 5, 5.5 plus 1.25, 6.25 per cost. So, okay, now the decision is like whether you have to buy or you have to like manufacture, make or, make or buy decision, right, under the marginal costing. So, here the decision depends on relevant cost. So, uh, which are the variable cost of making the components? 2.75 material, 1.75 labor, 0.5 other variable. Uh, this combined all together 5 rupees. So if the supplier offers rupees at 4.85, so which is less than 5, so you should not, like, as per marginal costing, you should not include the fixed cost in order to go for the make or buy decision. So you might think like, uh, sir, as the, if you have to also include the fixed cost, which is 1.25, ultimately it becomes 6.25. No, under marginal costing, you must only include the variable cost when there is a make or buy decision. So here, if the variable cost total is 5 rupees and the supplier is offering at a price of rupees 4.85 per unit, which is lesser than the our variable cost, right? So here you must go for the buying 
Okay, so here the option, right option, which is B, buy. Okay, so moving to the question 158. Okay, in responsibility cost accounting, the cost in focus are, the responsibility accounting, cost in focus are what? Controllable cost. So it not, we are the responsibility accounting, the management accounting itself, we are focusing on the cost control. So it focuses on the controllable cost. So 159, dash is prepared for single level of activity and single set of business conditions. So dash, fixed budget, because... So a fixed budget is designed for a specific level of activity and does not change with variations in activity levels, clear? So making it suitable for stable business conditions, clear? So moving to the question 160, which of the following is not a characteristics of management accounting? Forward looking, historical orientation, internal focus, decision making. So which is not historical orientation. History is not relevant to our management accounting, right? So management accounting is forward looking and focuses on future planning and decision making and like financial accounting, which has a historical evolution. So option B, historical evolution is not the red option here, okay? So moving to the question number 161. Oh, move to the question 161. Which of the following is not a relevant cost information in a make or buy decision in short run? So in short run, this is a, he's not, he's asking that not a relevant cost information in make a, in a make or buy decision. So, okay, that is in marginal costing. So, okay. So option A, burglary. Option B, fire. Option C, marine. So here, none of the above, like none of the options like burglary or fire or marine are relevant to short short term make or buy decision which focus on make uh, which focus on variable and avoidable cost okay so it's not a relevant cost information okay so none of the above is the right option here okay so moving to the question 162 variance analysis is used to so variance analysis is used to identify the root cause of inefficiency is the adoption. So we calculate, calculate contribution margin, prepare financial statement, determine break but No. So identify the root causes of inefficiency is the adoption here. Because variance analysis, variance analysis helps in identifying the reasons for deviations from planned performance, allowing management to address the inefficiency. So moving to the question 163, which of the following budget should be prepared first? Production budget, uh, purchase budget, master budget, sales budget. So here the option which is sales budget is the starting point in the budgeting process as it drives other budgets like production, purchase and master budget. So if you plan the sales, then only according to that, you can prepare your production or purchase or master budgets. Clear? So sales budget. So moving to the question number 164, the per unit expenses of the dash portion vary with the volume of production while dash portion remains the same with volume. So per unit expenses of the variable portion varies with the volume of production while proportions are uh, while portions dash portions so why fixed portions remains the same with volume okay so variable cost change with the production volume while fixed cost remains constant regardless of the volume produced okay so moving to the question 165 labor turnover option a the number of people working in the current period the number of people who left the organization in the previous period the rate of change of labor force the rate of change in the wages of the labor force so option c rate of the change of labor force so labor turnover refers to the rate at which employees leave and are replaced in an organization during a specific period so rate of change of labor force is the right option here so moving to the question 166 which method of costing is commonly used by companies that produce unique products or services so which Method of costing, option A, process, B, job, C, batch, D, both A and C. So, A and C is purely irrelevant. So, okay. So, job costing, because job costing is used for unique or customized products as it tracks cost for individual jobs or projects. Clear? So, where, whenever there is a like product or unique product, so job costing. Okay. So, moving to the question 167, which budgeting technique involves preparing budgets from the bottom of the organization hierarchy to the Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Due to some. So, okay. Which budgeting technique involves preparing budgets from the bottom of the organization hierarchy to the top? Option A, top down budgeting, zero based budgeting, incremental budgeting, bottom up budgeting. So, which is the right option here? Bottom up budgeting because bottom up budgeting starts at the departmental or operation level where managers prepare budgets that are the uh, then consolidated at higher level. So bottom up budgeting is the red option here. Okay. So moving to the question 168, just in time inventory management and activity based costing were developed during the which stage? First stage or second stage or third stage? Third stage. Because just in techniques and ABC systems were developed during the third stage of cost management evolution to improve the efficiency and allocate cost or more accurately. Okay. So third stage is the red option here. Okay. So moving to the next question, which is uh 
169 in a responsibility accounting system managers are accountable for managers are accountable for which cost over which they have control right so incremental cost they are not the product cost but not for period cost not so cost over which they have control because like responsibility accounting ensures managers are held accountable for cost or revenues they can influence or control directly so cost over which they have control is the right option here so moving to the question 170 circumstances that influence the profitability of a decisions are referred to as dash strategies payoff matrix states of nature the marginal utility of money here the answer which is states of nature or external factors or circumstances that affect the decisions outcomes but are beyond the control of the decision maker so okay so states of nature is the adoption here moving to the question 171 which of the following would be an argument for the use of book value in the computation of operating assets in return on investment calculations option a it allows the manager to replace old worn out equipment with a minimum adverse impact on roi Option B, it allows ROI to decrease over time as assets gets older. Option C, it is consistent with how plant and equipment items are reported on the balance sheet. And option D, it eliminates both age of equipment and method of depreciation as factors in ROI computations. So, okay, so which is the right option here? So, just take a look at the option C. It is consistent with how plant and equipment items are reported on the balance sheet. This is the, uh, that argument would be a relevant for the use of netbook value in the compression of operating assets, right? So using net, net book value aligns ROI calculations with standard accounting practices and financial reporting. So option C is the red option here. So moving to the question number 172, okay? A company has two divisions. The divisions are identical in terms of the number and the types of missions they have and the operations they carry out. However, one division was set up four years ago and the other was set up one year ago. Head office appraises the division using both return on the investment and residual income. Which of the following statement is correct in relation to the outcome of the appraisal for each division? So they are like the appraisers, the head office, how they are appraising both on the basis of return on investment as well as the residual income. So, okay, now he is asking which of the following statement is correct in relation to the outcome of the appraisal for each division. Okay, and again, both are identical. Okay, so both RO and RO and RI will favor the older division. ROI will favor the older division, but RI will treat each fairly. RI will favor the newer division and ROI will favor the older division. Both RI and ROI will favor the newer division. So which is the uh, right statement? Okay. Appraisal for each division. So here ROI will favor the older division, but RI will treat each fairly. So because return on investment is a, uh, always like favored older decisions due to the lower net book value as assets depreciate, right? So inflating the ROI figure. Residual income whereas it uh, accounts for the opportunity cost and does not directly depend on asset age. So ensuring a fairer comparison. Okay. So option B is the reduction here. Okay, moving to the question 173. Okay, so in a product mix decision, which is the most important factor to consider in order trying to maximize profits. Now he is asking in a product mix decision, which is the most important factor to consider in order trying to maximize profits. So which is the right option here. So just take a look at the options. Contribution per unit of a scarce resource used to make the product option. Option B, contribution, contribution per unit of the product. Option C, variable cost per unit of the product. Option D, product unit selling price. So which is the right option here? Contribution per unit of a scarce resource used to make the product. Because when resources are limited, maximizing profit depends on the prioritizing products that provide the highest contribution margin per unit of the constant resource, right? Well, like... When there is a product mix decision, we will be considering what PV ratio, right? Which is having the most to highest PV ratio that will be produced more in order to maximize our profit. So that's the reason contribution per unit of a scarce resource used to make the product. Okay. So option A is the right option here. Option question number 7, 174. Which of the following costs are incurred by a commercial airline can be classified as variable? So in a commercial airline, which of the cost below cost are classified as a variable cost? Interest cost on leasing and or leasing of aircraft. Pilot salary, depreciation of aircraft. None of these three costs can be classified as variable. So which is the, so here the interest pilot salaries and depreciation all are the fixed cost, right? And they do not vary with the level of flight operation. So these all cannot be classified as variable. So D option, none of these are three costs can be classified as variable. So moving to the question 175, a large margin of safety indicates overcapitalization, the soundness of businesses uh, and overproduction and D, none of them. So Margin of safety is nothing but, so beyond the breaks, break even sales is nothing but margin of safety sales, right? So when there is a larger margin of safety, that 
indicates the soundness of the business because they are making a huge sale and they are being a profitable business so that indicates the soundness of the business because a higher margin of safety means the business can withstand a significant drop in sales before incurring losses so reflecting a operational soundness clear so moving to the question 176 usually the production budget is stated in terms of production budget is stated in terms of what always they are in the whether it is a money Quantity are both of them or another quantity. Production budget is production is purely based on in terms of quantities, right? So moving to the question 177. Revision of budget is necessary when original budget was prepared with. If revision of budget is necessary when the original budget was prepared with inappropriate data. So whenever there is an inappropriate data, you must go for the revision of budget. So budgets need to be revised if they are based on incorrect or outdated information to ensure the realistic planning and control. Okay. So inappropriate data is an adoption here. So going to the question 178, what transfer pricing method is preferred by cost of content, cost based on negotiated on market based on dual pricing, which is so cost of content, obviously cost based transfer pricing is often preferred by the cost of content. So ultimately, as it aligns with the cost to control and internal cost to measurement print practices. Okay, so cost based is the right option here. Going to the question 179, which of the, the like, following is the limitation of management accounting, which is the limitation of costly affair, the evaluationary stage, psychological psychological resistance and all of the above. So whenever there is an all of the above, you must be careful with the options. So you must clearly go through with the options. What does it mean exactly? You must able to understand the options. So costly affair and evolutionary stage and as well as psychological resistance. So it, these are the limitation of management accounting, which we have discussed. So all of the above is the right option because management accounting has a limitation such as being a costly affair, being at an evolutionary stage and also facing psychological resistance to change. Okay. So all of the above is the right option here. And moving to the question 180, objectives of management accounting, policy formulation, helpful in decision making, helpful in controlling, the all of the above, which is the right option here. So management accounting aids in policy formulation, decision making and controlling business operations. So ultimately, all of the above is the right option here. So moving to the 181, which of the following cost is relevant in decision making? Committed cost, accounting cost, historical cost, cash cost. So which is the cost is relevant in decision making? Cash cost. So cash costs are relevant for decision making as they represent the actual outflows and affect the financial position directly. So cash cost. Moving to the 183, the cost data provide invaluable information for taking the following management decisions. Cost data provide invaluable information for what? Taking the following management. What are the decisions to make or buy? To own or hire fixed asset, determine the expansion or contraction policy, D all of the above. So as I told you, whenever there is an all of the above, you must be clearly uh, able to understand the question properly and even the options. So cost data provide invaluable information for taking the following matter. What are they? Again, to make or buy, to own or hire fixed asset, determine the expansion or contraction policy, all of the above. So here the option which is all of the above is the right option because cost data assists in decisions such as make or buy owning or hiring fixed assets and determining policies for expansion or contraction. Okay. So moving to the question 183, the Laplace criterion, Laplace, sorry, the Laplace criterion is the feature of which of the following? Deterministic model, decision making under certainty, decision making under uncertainty, option D, optimization. So Laplace, Laplace criterion is followed under decision making under uncertainty, which we have discussed, right? So, okay, moving to the question number 184. Okay, which one of the following responsibility center is an organizational unit whose manager is responsible for managing revenue and current expenses? Which center investment center are? Oh, sorry. Uh, which one of the following? Uh, sorry, investment center, revenue center, profit center, which is that? So revenue center, because so your revenue center is focused on managing the revenues and related current expenses, but does not handle what? Capital investments or profit. So revenue center is the right answer here. Okay, moving to the question number 185. Okay, which one of the following statement is false? Which one of the following statement is false? Option A, management accountant uses cost accounting tools and techniques for planning and decision making. So he's asking, this is the right, right statement, right? Option B, management accounting is mostly historical in its approach and its project and it projects the past. How come? It doesn't project the past and even does not consider the historical information, right? So option B, it's a fair false statement. Just lay, uh, let's take a look at another two options. The cost accounting system can be installed without management accounting. Yes, management accounting forces on wealth maximization. Yes, ultimately we are maximizing the profits, which is ultimately a wealth maximization, right? So management accounting is mostly, so historically in its approach and it projects the past is the false statement here. So question 196, which of the following would decrease unit contribution margin the most? 10% unit contribution margin, contribution margin per unit is decreasing 
that what could be the reason 10% decrease in selling price 10% increase in variable cost 10% decrease in variable cost 10% 10% decrease in variable cost will increase the unit contribution 10% uh, decrease in fixed cost is purely irrelevant 10% increase in variable cost would decrease the contribution right so and 10% decrease in selling price directly it decreases the unit contribution margin because contribution margin is calculated as selling price minus variable cost. A decrease in selling price directly reduces the margin more than a proportional increase in variable cost. So increase in variable cost also decreases the contribution per unit, I told you, right? But whereas when decrease in selling price directly reduces the margin more than the proportional increases in variable cost. So when it is compared with variable cost, more power is with the selling price. So Selling 10% decrease in selling price can lead to decrease in unit contribution margin the most. Okay. So the most here, the question is the most. So when it is compared with selling and variables, so selling will be like predominant. Okay. Moving to the question number 187, which one of the following statements best demonstrate the concept of the learning curve? So here there are four options. Learning curve is a linear cost behavior influenced by learning. Learning curve is a judgmental method of estimating cost when learning is present. Option C, a learning curve is a percentage by which average time per unit produced decreases as output doubles. Option D, a learning curve is a percentage by which average time falls as output increases by one unit. So which is that? Demonstrate the cons, which statement demonstrate the concept of the learning curve. Option C, because the learning curve theory suggests that as production doubles, the efficiency increases, reducing the average time per unit by a specific percentage, right? So, Option C, a learning curve is a percentage by which average time per unit produced decreases as output doubles is the right option here. So we properly demonstrate the concept of the learning curve. Moving to the 188, EVA, economic value added is a concept that is closely related to residual income. EVA is computed by, by what is the formula like? Subtracting the adjusted total cost of capital from the adjusted tax after income. Option B, subtracting adjusted after tax income from total divisional investment. Option C, dividing adjusted tax after income after tax income by adjusted divisional investment dividing adjusted after tax sub income by adjusted total cost of capital so here the term division is irrelevant we just follow the subtracting method there over like so option a just take a look at option a subtracting the adjusted total cost of capital from the adjusted after tax income which is nothing but capital into ko so what is no pack minus capital into ko you did right so here no pad is nothing but adjusted after tax income, right? So adjusted total cost of capital is nothing but capital into KO. So you will be like subtracting both the elements. So option A is the right option here. Moving to the 189, expected value in decision analysis is a standard deviation using the probability as weights, the square root of the square deviations, a measure of the difference between best possible outcome and the outcome of the original decision and arithmetic mean using the probability as weights. So which is the right option here? So an arithmetic mean using the probabilities as weights is the Right answer because the expected value represents the weighted average of all possible outcomes with probabilities used as weights. So it is a critical concept in decision making under this. So option A, sorry, option D, an arithmetic mean using the probabilities as weights is the right option here. Moving to the question 190, DAS is the budget which incorporates all functional budgets, which is finally approved, adopted, and employed. DASH is a budget which incorporates all functional budgets. So whenever you like, wherever functional budgets, it indicates what? Master budget. You need not look at any other options, master budgets, right? So because the master budget is a comprehensive financial plan that integrates all functional budgets, that could be sales, production, and finance, into a single budget, right? So, okay. So moving to the question 191, fixed cost is relevant cost if it is discretionary sunk unavoidable option d periodic so which is the right option discretionary because discretionary fixed cost can be influenced by managerial decisions and are therefore relevant in decision making sunk or unavoidable cost are not relevant right so because and moving to the question 192 under marginal costing the opening and closing stock is valued at which of the following basis opening stock is valued at variable cost in under marginal costing, opening stock is valued at variable cost, closing stock is valued at total cost, opening stock is valued at total cost, and closing stock is valued at variable cost. Both opening and closing stock is valued at variable cost. Both opening and closing stock is valued at total cost. So which is the right option here? Both opening and marginal costing. If you look at the marginal costing, that statement, both opening and closing stock is valued at a variable cost because marginal costing values inventory only at variable cost since fixed cost are treated as period cost. So you must have the clarity regarding that. So option C is the right option here. Moving to the question 193, where is management accounting applied? Small trading organization, NPOs, cooperative societies, large industrial and trading organization, where it is 
applied large industrial and trading organization because management accounting is the most commonly applied in large organization that require detailed financial analysis for decision making so option d is the right option here moving to the question number 194 which of the following option is not characteristics of management accounting you must know you must know about the theory part of the management accounting here so future oriented accounting information compulsory accounting management oriented so which of the following is not a character characteristic is ask, asking so it is not a compulsory accounting not like any there is no any board like a, uh, there is no any specific board that you should prepare this financial statement uh, like like that there is no any compulsory accounting is available in management accounting so it is not a characteristic so moving to the question one and the creation of value through effective use of resources focus is the focus area of the which stage it's a fourth stage the fourth stage of management accounting, accounting focuses on creating value through strategic use of resources and advanced techniques like value chain analysis and benchmarking so that's a fourth stage Moving to the question number 196, basic types of cost pool allocations include, basic types of cost pool allocations include, option A, allocation of cost to segments, products and services, option B, determining inputs for CVP model, option C, establishing cash flows for capital budgeting analysis, option D, reallocation of cost among service departments. So which is the right option here? The right option which is? Option A, allocation of cost to segments of products and services. Option B, determine inputs for CVP models. Option C, establishing cash flows for capital budgeting analysis. Option D, reallocation of cost among the service departments. So which is the right option here? Allocation of cost to segments, products and services. Because cost to pool allocation refers to the process of assigning cost to from a cost to pool to specific cost objects. That could be a segments, products or services. So whereas option B, C and D are not directly related to the basic types of cost pool allocations. So B is related to cost volume profit analysis, C is related to capital budgeting and D is a specific type of allocation within the service departments, not a basic type of cost pool allocations. So option A is the right option here. Okay. So moving to the question number 197, which of the following is least likely to be classified as a batch level activity in an activity based costing system? So which is here, which is the least, he is asking least likely, quality assurance, receiving and inspections, option D production setup. These are like, we have like a, not a least likely, but whereas property taxes is a least likely because, so in ABC, activity based costing, activities are categorized by their cost drivers, unit level, batch level, product level, visibility level. Whereas batch level activities are those that occur with each batch of production, right? So, but, uh, but property taxes are more likely to be facility level cost. Okay. So since they are incurred regardless of the production volume or batches products produced. Okay. So the other options like quality assurance, receiving uh, and inspections and production setups, these are more directly related to batches of production. So Property tax is a least likely, least likely. Okay. So moving to the question 198. PKS Limited is charging, sorry, changing from a traditional costing system to activity based system. As a result of this action, which of the following cost would likely change from indirect to direct? Direct materials, factory supplies, option B, production setup, finished goods inspection and direct materials, production setup, finished goods inspection and product shipping, D, all of the above. So which is the right option here? Production setup, finished goods inspection and the product shipping will be likely to change from indirect to direct. Because in traditional costing, many costs are allocated directly to, indi sorry, indirectly to products. Activity-based costing system aims to trace the cost more directly to product or activities. So production setup, finished goods inspection, and product shipping can often be more directly traced to specific product or batches under an ABC costing, right? AB costing system. So making them direct cost in this context, clear? So direct materials and factory supplies are typically already considered direct cost in both traditional and ABC system. Okay. So option, option C is the right option here. Production setup, finished goods, inspection and product shipping. So moving to the question 199, the term contribution refers to the option A, excess of selling price or variable cost per unit. Exactly. That's the right option. Difference between selling price and total cost. No. Subscription towards uh, rising capital. No. And D option one of the above. So option A is the right option here. Excess of selling price or variable cost per unit. Yes, already we know this, okay? We need not give a brief explanation regarding this. So moving to the question number, final question from our double under MCQ series, the profit or volume ratio in marginal costing can be improved by lowering the fixed cost. 
increasing the selling price, increasing variable cost, then none of the above. Ultimately, you need not think about any other option. Increasing the selling price is the only way to increase your PV ratio, right? So PV ratio is nothing but contribution divided by sales. So in order to increase your PV ratio, you must increase your selling price. So ultimately, the sales will get increased. And again, the variable cost will be remains the same. So selling price when it increases, variable cost remains the same. Then ultimately, your contribution per unit will increase. So ultimately, the out of the total sales, your, even your contribution, total contribution will get increased. Ultimately, the contribution, if it increases, PV ratio will get increased. Okay. So option B, increasing the selling price is the right option here. With this, we have completed our double under MCQ series for our management accounting. Thank you all.